أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله we're going to be going through a tafsir of Surah Al-Bayna but in a different way that we're normally accustomed to This surah is considered by some of the Mufassirun the scholars of Quranic exegesis especially in regards to the beginning ayat to be the most difficult ayat in tafsir and you will find actually many different opinions and explanations of these ayat and this has to do with scholars adding details which have been put in to expound on these ayat now what I will do is I'll go through an explanation of these ayat based on the most superior method of interpreting the Quran which is using the Quran itself in Arabic we say Al-Quran Yufassir Al-Quran the Quran expounds on the Quran. So if you find one ayah, you can get details about the ayah from another ayah in the Quran. Or maybe there are many ayat that give m- details. So what I will do with Surah Al-Bayna is interpret it with other ayat from the Quran. We'll touch on the linguistics of the surah and to show that the surah can be understood in a very coherent manner. Okay, so let's begin inshallah. Now the first thing we have is a negation, lam. So it's a harf jazm. It comes with a mudara verb, which is here yakun. It makes the fi'l mudara have the meaning of al madi. Now, this brings us to a question. We have two different ways of saying that. Ma kana and lam yakun. And they're both used for the past tense. So it was not. Now this is used in the ayah. So let's first of all explain the difference between why Makana was not used. It wasn't Makana Levina Kafaru and so on. It was Lem Yakun. Ma actually is a stronger negation, is stronger as a response to denial. And it comes as a response. So for example, if somebody denied this, that the disbelievers among the people of the scripture and polytheists were not to be parted until there came to them clear evidence, then the response of that would be Makana. Here the ayah is just giving information. It's not responding to denial. Now that's one way of using ma. Ma also is a stronger negation than lem. Ma, for example, is used as a response to an oath. Lem yakun, on the other hand, is used when initiating a new sentence, as in this case here. And it can also be used for, for example, a jumla haliya. For example, in Surah Al-Insan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينُ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا So scholars say that لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا is the hal for an insan. And so لَمْ يَكُنْ is used. Now to contrast both, مَكَانَ and لَمْ يَكُنْ, we have the following ayah. ثُمَّ لَمْ تَكُنْ Fitnatuhum here lam takun. So thumma lam takun fitnatuhum illa an qalu wallahi rabbina ma kunna mushrikeen. So here the ma comes after an oath. Wallahi rabbina. So you see there's more strength here with the negation. Now another example of using lam. For example, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ صَمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدُ So it's giving information, and that's why lem is used, and not ma. So we see the reason why lem was used. Okay, next. So lem يَكُنْ So there's a negation there. Then comes the ism of يَكُنْ which is الَّذِينَ This is Fi mahal, rafa' ism yakun. And then kafaru. Kafaru is a certain mawsul for the ism mawsul, al Lam yakun, al kafaru. So it's those who commit kufr. So this verb, kafara, or here the plural, kafaru, means to cover, hide, conceal, deny. So it's a general word. It could include complete denial of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ingratitude because when one denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his religion one is ungrateful 
He's not acknowledging the one who gave him all the good in his life. Okay, so he's talking about living at Kafaru. Then what happens is it expounds on from which groups it's talking about. And it mentions the two groups that existed in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even today. So min ahlil kitab wal mushrikeen. People of the scripture and from the polytheists. So ahlil kitab, here is a, a term of honor that they are people of scripture. And we have the mushrikeen, those who associate partners with Allah. And it's talking about both these groups that commit kufr. Shirk is kufr. So these people commit shirk, but they also commit other types of kufr. Things like denying the attributes and actions of Allah SWT. Things like denying that Allah sent a message and so on. So the Quran mentions many instances of the kufr that they commit. Now using the term here, ahl, denotes that they are people of knowledge. They've got access to the scriptures. They have guidance of the scriptures. So these are the main groups that existed in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even today in the Mushrikeen. And let's see an instance of them committing kufr mentioned in the Quran. So you'll find many instances of this, but I'm just giving you some examples. So for example, the surah where it's usually mentioned is in Surat Al-An'am. It says here, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ يَعْدِلُونَ Then those who disbelieve equate others with their Lord. And you notice here there's restriction in the language. هُوَ الَّذِي He is the one. وَهُوَ الله. So notice here it talks about creation. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ طِينٍ ثُمَّ قَضَى أَجَلَ وَأَجْلٌ مُسَمَّنْ إِنْدَهُ So he's talking about creation that Allah created. It's he who created and not anyone else and not their false deities. Next it talks about that Allah is the only deity in the heavens and the earth. He knows your secret. يَعْلَمُ سِرَّكُمْ وَجَهْرُكُمْ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْسِبُونَ And he knows what you earn. So these mushrikeen, those who equate others with Allah, think that Allah doesn't know their secrets and what they do in public and what they earn. So all these gods that you worship, they, they do not create, they don't know anything. They can't harm, they can't benefit, and so on. So the point is, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ Those who deny their Lord, يَعْدِلُونَ So they give the powers that Allah has to others besides Him. So it's a, a kufr of al-mushrikeen. Here it says, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ الثَّلَاثَةَ They have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three. And, so, and some of them say that. They say the Father is part of a trinity. And Allah calls this belief kufr. لَقَدْ kafara. And obviously this is also shirk. And the reason why we know that is because of the jawab. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا إِلَٰهٌ وَاحِدٍ And notice here the ma that comes as a response. We said the ma comes responding to something. Kufr is more general than shirk. Now the reason why kufr is mentioned is because they're not just committing shirk. But what they're doing is also they're denying scripture. All the prophets believed in one God and not a trinity. Okay? So that's one instance of Ahl Kitab committing kufr. So, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ So this clarifies from which group الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا are from. And this is known as مِنْ الْبَيَانِيَ And what scholars say about the Arab of this, they say this is actually a hal for a dhamir in kafaru. So this wow here, wow jama'a, the wow of plural, it's the fa'il, which is the dhul hal. The state of the fa'il of when they commit kufr is that they are min ahl kitab wal mushrikeen. So this is the hal, the dhul hal, and this is the fa'il of the dhul hal. Now if you'll be confused with that, I do advise you to go to the lessons 
on the hal in the hidayat and fi nahu course min ahli kitabi wal mushrikin munfakina now what you expect it to be is lam yakun alladhina kafaru min ahli kitabi wal mushrikina liyanfakku liyanfakku so there's a lam lam it's called lam al jihud and then you have the verb yanfakku and this lam is used for emphasis but what's happening here is we're not using the verb so let me just write this li li yanfakku what's happening here is we're using the ism fa'il munfakkin and this is actually the khabar of yakun so there is emphasis here more than if we used the verb form because the verb indicates an action in time it could occur for a period of time and then stop this is talking about a permanent parting away a complete parting away so those who disbelieved among ahli kitab were mushrikeen were never ever gonna be munfakkin so the verb infakka and fakku means to separate from a strong bond something that's very tight and what this indicates is that ahli kitab wal mushrikeen were very strongly bound to their kufr and they were not going to separate or part away from it in any way and what was needed was munfakkin and it's a permanent separation so this action of infikak the mustar it takes a great force to separate so lam yakun alladhina kafaru min ahli kitabi wal mushrikina munfakkina hatta until this is what's known as harf ghaya it's a particle which denotes you could say an end point this was not going to happen until until what ta'tihumul bayyina ta'ti means to come and what came al bayyina to who hum they there's actually another verb that could have been used hatta ja'athumul bayyina but the mudara is never used for ja'a taji'a is not used in the quran so i've spoken about the difference between ja'a and ata they both mean to come ata amrullah and ja'a amrullah both are used in the quran ja'a has more strength to it more than ata even the way you pronounce it ja'a ata here ta'ti is the only verb used in the mudara form ja' is only used in the madhi idha ja'a nasrullah wal fath but ata ya'ti they both used in the madhi and the mudara form are used one of the usages for the fi'l mudara is when an action occurs repetitively so here ta'tihum actually is speaking of al bayna coming to them time and time again and this actually matches the next ayah rasul min allah yatlu suhuf mutahhara we we'll speak about this ayah in the next lesson but it's talking about that the revelation is recited and the mudara form is used as well to denote it occurring time and time again so there's a constant reminder for ahli al-kitab and al-mushrikeen and what came to them was al bayyina al bayyina comes from the verb bana yabinu which means to be clear and apparent and we have the the sifa mushabbaha bayyin so here it's on the pattern of fa'il so if we let's just do this fa'il fa kalima is the ba ain kalima is the ya and then we have the ya as well another ya and then the lam kalima is the nun so here there's a kasra but what happens is this becomes a shadda with a kasra and then you get bayyin now that's a sifa bayyin is not a sifa it's describing something an entity 
And you do this by adding a ta marbuta at the end. Or you can do it by adding a ta marbuta at the end. An example of this is we have the sif mushabbaha hasan. So hasan. But if you add ta marbuta at the end, hasana, which means a good deed. You can create an entity from a sifa by adding a ta marbuta. And a ta marbuta actually you can create events or occurrences, for example, and so on. In in those cases, for example, you have the ism fa'il, and then you add a tamar at the end to create the event. Okay? So in this case, al bayina the clear evidence. Okay, and we'll, we'll explain what this clear evidence is from the Quran. And that completes lesson number one for Surah al bayina وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيْدِنَا مُحَمَّدُ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ